everybody. Ah, let's see, Raphael is, uh, is on, I see. Um, I'm going to, as I just mentioned, divide the, this presentation into two parts. The first part is uh, short. Well, I'll give a, a background as to what we're doing in the course, um, and then you can ask, uh, ask any questions that you might have about assignments, etc., uh, due dates. So, okay, so it's our it's, the course is called Cartography. I'm Nathan Bowden, your instructor. Um, cartography uh, comes from, if you know any, if you know Greek, I had to look this up, but uh, kartos, which means uh, a map, and graphein or graphene, which uh, means to write. So writing a map. It's the study and, uh, let's see, I want to put you away, Marina. It's the study and practice of making maps, um, it, but it combines science, aesthetics, technique, uh, and we'll not be looking at GIS, uh, using ArcGIS, for example. Our Christina's back. Uh, during the theory part of the course, we'll be just talking about what maps are, how we use maps, what a good map is, and uh, in this way you can, as it says here, communicate spatial information effectively. Um, for example, I know that uh, when one of your first assignments for the project, uh, students just kind of threw everything together, and uh, while that certainly has a lot of information, it's maybe not the best way to uh, communicate in a visual, uh, visual way. Uh, Old-fashioned cartography, which you see here, and this this um, old map of the Indian Empire of, of Great Britain, uh, used to be just paper maps that uh, people uh, would go around the world and draw. But modern cartography is uh, uses geographic information science or GI science, and it uh, has a lot of theoretical but also practical foundations for geographic information systems. The fundamental problems of traditional cartography and also the goals of this course are to help you represent the terrain of a mapped object on a flat media. What does that mean? That just means um, the world is round, but it's not even perfectly round. Uh, Christina, um, other people can hear me. Uh, if you're having problems, uh, maybe turn up the volume. So for uh, the world is a imperfect sphere and we have to put it onto a flat two-dimensional um, flat two-dimensional two media either a paper or uh, okay so look at, yeah I'll let you guys talk about that either we're looking on a flat screen or on a if you print it out on a flat piece of paper so how do we make a three-dimensional world turn it into a, a two-dimensional object? The next is to eliminate characteristics of the map that are not relevant. So if you, uh, if you are going to show a map of the river, uh, you might want to include uh, the terrain around the river but do you necessarily need to see every building? Uh, do you want to represent what's on the fields? Uh, so what do you want to present? What do you not want to um, represent? The least complex is normally the best. Orchestrate the elements of the map to best convey its message to its audience. Um, so if you have a message, that should be that should come come over to the uh, person who accepts the message and the question is how can you do that the meeting times dates and locations here uh, are all of the uh, meetings that we have for the next two weeks It's a two-week course the uh, first are the dates so today is the 22nd um, 845 to 1020 in uh, room HB 104 or big blue button as you see underneath it says uh, we was all courses we given via the big blue button, and uh, don't forget it takes about 15 minutes to turn on your computer and log in. So if the 
starting time is 8.45. Uh, we will give the presentation at 9 o'clock, and by we, I mean I. <laughs> um, the lessons, there are, like I said, there are, this course is divided into two parts. First, we have a theoretical part, which is this week, week one. There are four lessons. This is the first lesson. If you, uh, each lesson is, is, a, is on a different day. So today is one, tomorrow is two. Wednesday and Thursday are the same lesson. That's a self-guided practical. So if you go on uh, onto big blue button, sorry, if you go onto blackboard, I'm getting my my BB and my BBB mixed up. But uh, if you go onto blackboard, you'll notice there's uh, a software package, a small software package you can download called the GWiz GViz toolkit, and that's where you can do the practical. Uh, for the way that's on on Wednesday and Thursday. And Thursday, af after the second self guided practical, um, is the fourth lesson. We talk about map scales and coordinate systems. Oh, well, well welcome back, Christine. I'm glad you fixed that. <laughs> the headphone helps. Um, so, Monday through uh, Thursday, you have uh, four lessons, uh, two lessons on Thursdays, so Thursday morning and Thursday. And, that, and I will I will not be there on Wednesday. So Monday and Tuesday, I will be there. Uh, Wednesday I will not, and then Thursday I'll be there for uh, both the self-guided practical, uh, part two, and uh, the lesson. The second week, the second part of the course is your final project, uh, and this is tied to your uh, normal project. Uh, well then, uh, Marike, if you can't be there on Thursdays, then you can come in by big blue button or uh, see see it on YouTube because I, I, I record all of these sessions and put them on YouTube so that's handy um, the second week is the final project which is tied directly to your uh, normal project for the you know project uh, urban ecology in which um, as you see you have three days to and to work on your project and specifically, I give you um, a, a, a couple of maps to make, which you uh, can work on in teams. So these are all group work, and that you can directly apply into your um, project. And you give a presentation of your uh, final project next week, Friday. So next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is for your project. And then Friday is the presentation of your project. If you are um, studying abroad, you still have to give your project, and you still have to turn it in uh, the, on time. Yeah, pretty busy. Uh, and you still have to turn it on time, but you will have to make a, a screen capture presentation. Uh, I mentioned on uh, in the syllabus that the my best way of making screen captures is using a software program called Snagit. So just make your presentation in PowerPoint uh, and uh, do a screen capture, upload that to YouTube, and send me the link uh, via the Blackboard link uh, to hand it in. So everybody uh, has to give the presentation, even if you are abroad. If there are any questions about that, um, by, by all means, type them. But there's one last sheet before I'm, I want to ask for questions, and that's what is everything worth? Well, each of the assignments, let's see, assignment one, let's see, so Simona, it's like making a video about the presentation upload. Yes, um, you you make your presentation what, how I suggest it. You can do it any way you want. Um, I suggest. Uh, Everyone, it's a group presentation, so I'll go over this here. So the assignment one is is 10% of your final grade. It's individual. It's due on the 25th before midnight. So that's this Friday before midnight, and you turn it in on Blackboard. Assignment two, again, 10%, also due Friday uh, before midnight, also on Blackboard. The third assignment, this is the double assignment, so it's 15%, and it's also due on Friday before midnight, and you guessed it, on Blackboard. The fourth assignment is on Friday. It's again with 
does it say 26? It's, what's the what's Friday? Is that the 26th? Ah, uh, uh, this is incorrect. I should it's not due Thursday. It's due Friday. Sorry for the confusion. The 26th is Friday, so this should all say 26. So you have an extra day. <laughs> Uh, the assignment four is on. F I I give the presentation on Friday, so that's due Monday before midnight. So you have all weekend and all day Monday to do it, and then uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, is the final project. The report is due uh, Thursday at midnight. This is 40%, and this is a group project again to be printed on Blackboard, and the presentation is 15%, also group work. It's due on also Thursday at midnight, uh, and it's on Blackboard. Presentations will, for people who are physically able to, so that means the non-hungry games group, um, are are in. Uh, it's turned in on Blackboard, and then you come to the class and you give your your presentation uh, on on the smart board in, in, a no, in a normal location. It's just I want everybody to be uh, on even. Same at the same level, so even if uh, you don't give your presentation till Friday at 10 o'clock or something, off the top of my head, that means you still have the same, you have to turn it in at the same time as everybody. So you come in and you use the presentation, which is on Blackboard. You can't come on Friday and say, oh, I have a new, I have a new version, because that's a, that's not fair to the students who um, are, for example, in Romania or Hungary or Spain. Now, that's my last uh, slide on the background of uh, the course. Are there any questions? I have a sip of my coffee. I don't know if anybody is uh, furiously t uh, typing a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. The assignments 1, 2, 3, and 4 um, assignments 1, 2, 3, and 4 are individual. Only the final re uh, project is by group, and that's by your project group, because your, the, the, final, uh, the final project I is coupled directly onto your project. So I'm going to say, um, for example, here, here are all these uh, maps, or well, here's these coverages, uh, now put them together and make several different types of maps that you can then use in your report. So the idea is uh, that this course uh, is not just a theoretical, uh, I think it's a fun course, but it's not just pure theory, you apply it to your project. So the, the classes should support your project, if that makes any sense. Uh, Simona, uh, the deadlines are early. It may seem early, but remember, your uh, project uh, has to go along quite nicely because you only have, uh, I think, three more weeks. So, um, yeah, it's a it's uh, busy, correct? But remember, you're supposed to uh, be spending. This is a three-credit course, so each credit is 28 hours. So you sh with 28 times three. That's um, 84 hours on this course. You should take you in two weeks, a little bit more than two weeks. Uh, well, that's 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 correct. But remember, this is uh, supporting your project, not. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I understand that some students have jobs, and uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of work to have school and and uh, jobs. But yes, these are requirements. Are there any other questions? Okay, and you also see I me mean, the the assignments are not. Uh, too terribly. It should take you one or two hours the most to do the assignments. All right. I'll continue now to the theoretical part of the class. Okay. 
So this first lesson is called visual communication. Um, uh, as I'll be showing shortly, there are two basic goals of maps to uh, visually communicate and uh, to visually think. And this one, lesson one, is just on the communication side. And tomorrow we'll talk about uh, visual, uh, visual thinking. There are uh, maps come in approximately three different types. Uh, one is called reference map. The second is a thematic map. And the third is a special purpose maps. And of course, in the next few slides, I'll be going over what these are. But in general, a reference map is what you um, maybe you'll see on Google Maps, or uh, if you get a if you open up um, uh, a book of maps and you just want to see where the roads are, where a city is. These are reference maps, so you use them for reference. Thematic maps um, have a purpose. They may only show one part. Of, uh, of an area and a special purpose map is a catch-all term for uh, for maps that don't really fall into the first two categories so what do I mean by a reference map so uh, reference maps are general maps that show uh, different types of spatial data with emphasis uh, on none of of the individual types Normal reference maps, uh, they can be vary, of course, in complexity and size, but normally they just show geographic features, so political boundaries, cities, topographic features like mountains or lakes, and transportation routes, uh, meaning roads, but also canals, etc. Here, on the next slide, this is a reference map of Thailand. Um, and as you see in this map, uh, this is Thailand here in the center with a, you can tell that's Thailand because it says Thailand in the, the legend here under underneath. You can see which uh, political boundaries, which countries surround Thailand. So Laos, Cambodia, Burma, and Malaysia to the south. You see the uh, cities of Thailand the larger cities have slightly larger, um, larger dots, and the smaller cities have smaller dots. You can see lakes, rivers, and the major roads. This is a, a normal general reference map, and you can, uh, and you've, I'm sure you've seen thousands of these uh, in your lifetime. Also, don't forget you have some reference. Here are the uh, the latitudes. Uh, and scale. We'll be talking about uh, what these are. These are called coordinate systems and map scale. That's in the last course, the last lesson of this week, so on, on Thursday. Uh, thematic maps are, as the name suggests, uh, thematic. They have a theme or a focus. It can be anything. Um, and most of the maps that you will be generating for this project, at least, will be thematic because you uh, are researching something. You're not just um, making a map to make, to make a reference guide, you're making a map to show your results. So they're very diverse. Uh, they can uh, quite often, um, as I mentioned here, they can be uh, qualitative or nominal. So they can either have categories of land coverage. It can be a farm will be brown and nature will be green. Or they can vary in quantitative ways. So, for example, rain. If one area rains more, it might have a red color, and if it doesn't rain a lot, it will have a blue color. And these are very, very common. If you watch, if you watch the news, if you watch the weather on the news, this is what they do. They show, oh, it's going to rain heavily in one section, then it's red, and if it's not going to rain, it's going to stay dry, then it will be, like, let's say, blue. Um, they can represent data by, I mentioned uh, color, but they can also be in points, lines, areas, and volumes. So they can use a hue, so that's color. They can use uh, lightness, so dark light. That's a chiaroscura. We use the Italian word for that. Uh, patterns, 
you can use different patterns, shapes, and they fit logically on either points, lines, or areas. So if you make a measurement on, for example, on a river, you can put a point on the river and show either if if you want to have a theme of, of phosphorus, if it has high phosphorus, you can make the point red, or you can make the point bigger. Uh, you can make a pie chart with the percentage area of uh, of of the phosphorus levels, etc. They can be qualitatively or quantitatively. So qualitatively meaning um, a number from zero to whatever, and quant quantitative uh, quantitatively uh, is is measured. So qualitatively, is the river clean? Uh, we saw for some those of you who were at the presentation at the water board, he had the river. If it was a good quality, it was green. For bad quality, it was red. But if you have a quantity, you can also make a scale. So the uh, it's not just good or bad, but uh, levels of uh, phosphorus, for example. But symbolization will be uh, shown in, in, in the next uh, lesson. Going back to Thailand as our example, here is a thematic map, uh, which is very different than the reference map you just saw. And so in this thematic map on the left, uh, it shows classes of vegetation. So it's a, a, a class, so if it's, it can't, it's very difficult to read, but this is brown, is agriculture, so this is an agricultural area here. Uh, the light green is tropical, so the tropical areas are here along the coast, but also in the center. Uh, teak, the type of tree which they cultivate, etc. Mangroves are, are in just a very small part. So this is a vegetation themed map on the left. On the right is a, a quantitative, so number oriented. And here in Bangkok, you see the capital of Thailand, you see that it has the highest population. Why? Because it's dark green. And on this scale here, dark green means high population. Population of more than 202 people per square kilometer. And the least uh, population is the cream colored where it's between zero and one uh, persons per square kilometer. That's very low. And this was made in 1974. All of these maps on Thailand uh, were, uh, were taken from the website of the University of Texas Library. So thank you to them for making these maps. Uh, the third type of map, as I mentioned, is the special purpose maps. Uh, special purpose maps uh, don't fall into the first two categories. They are made for one specific purpose, uh, normally to communicate something uh, to uh, to a specific type of people. This seems very uh, it's a very uh, uh, general uh, definition, but the examples are quite specific. So, for example, a navigational map. If you um, are a captain of a boat or a navigator of a boat, you want to have very detailed uh, navigation maps and they will give you all sorts of information that are not on a normal map so they will show the depth of uh, of the ocean or the body of water they will show the uh, the water where it, how it flows and quite often will say uh, how fast it flows where the wind normally comes from road atlases uh, an atlas is a book of maps so road atlases are very specific. They just show the roads, and they don't show anything else. They might show if it's one, two, three, four lane road, um, if it's a highway, if it's free, if it's a tollway. So these are all uh, 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 fall under special purpose maps. There's a small amount of people. So in the case of navigational maps, uh, ships captains or road atlases uh, drivers which it conveys just a one uh, specific type of information and here are two examples of uh, navigational maps uh, here uh, on the left hand side is the, the Appalachian Trail I'm not sure if you've heard of this 
It's a very famous trail uh, along the east coast of the United States. Uh, it starts all the way in the south and it runs all the way to the north of Maine. And this is one section uh, through through Maine. As you see this map, it does have some qualities of a reference map. So you see the borders here of Maine and between Maine and Canada. But you don't see really any other cities except for the cities along the trail. And this and along the trail it's very detailed and gives maybe even too much information. But um, outside of the trail there's very little data. So it's very specific, uh, a special purpose. And then here is a uh, a map of uh, a navigation map by the NOAA. Uh, they give very detailed maps of water and here we see Wisconsin and uh, Washington Island but uh, and that has a lot of data so you see the 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 heights of the of the of the island but also the depths of the water you see if you can zoom in you can also see the depths of the water but also uh, where uh, where in this area right here the 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 currents are very high, which is why this uh, this city here is called, uh, in French, the Gate of, of Death, because a lot of ships were stranded there. Uh, so there you go. These are a few thematic maps. Uh, to communicate visually uh, is a very important part. But as I mentioned, maps in general have two uh, two goals. Uh, we what I've shown today is the communication part of a map, but also there's the visual thinking, which will be covered tomorrow's lecture. The history of maps. This is um, uh, well, I'll go very quickly through the history of maps. Uh, in 1952, when modern cartography was basically launched by a book by uh, Arthur Robinson and in his book he had a chapter called the cartographic technique and he uh, says that uh, if we then make the obvious assumption that the content of a map is appropriate to its purpose there re yet remains the equally significant evaluation of the visual methods employed to convey that content so this is the kickoff of modern cartography the, uh, the theoretical uh, study of why and how maps uh, work, not just uh, as a reference, but how, how do we actually, uh, what are the steps between reality and the making and, and the interpretation of a map? There are a few steps which I will go through. He implies that the function is to communicate but that as cartographers, we are all cartog cartographers now uh, because we're making maps, it's our responsibility to z design a map or maps that communicate effectively. So this theoretical idea very, very shortly uh, is put into a model. These models, there are several models. Uh, I show you a very simple one here, but they have four uh, sub, uh, common elements geographic reality so the world exists we have to uh, we have to assume that for uh, this class there is a thing that's called the world there are people who make maps who we call cartographers and uh, we interpret this reality so we are in this world and we interpret it in our way we make a map as cartographers that's what we do we make maps a physical or electronic medium that is the representation of reality but then there are readers of the maps other people who have to interpret this reality that we've interpreted for themselves and they may have never been to the place that you are showing like for example uh, Emilio is in uh, in Spain I've been to Spain but I haven't been to where he is so he's gonna have to make He's in a, a real location. I'm assuming he's in a real location. Uh, he himself exists and is interpreting this geographic reality. He's making a map. And then I, as the viewer, interprets his reality uh, from his map. 
So lots of things can go wrong, and that's why maps are so important, because uh, they need to convey a message. But I have, we have, you, the person here, the map reader, has to understand the real world, even though he or she may have never been there, uh, or may never go there. So that's the challenge. And that's the way that uh, the dominant thinking between the 1960s through the 1990s about map making as a communication. Uh, and then the further developments um, have a lot to do with the internet. You may have guessed that and uh, maps have gone online. Uh, and since the 1990s, we, we've, we still see, of course, the importance of maps as communication. But there's also maps as a visualization of, of data. So, uh, so the, the communication, uh, just to sum up a few things I just mentioned, maps communicate information to a map reader because both the map maker, the cartographer, and the map reader should have some common shared understandings of what these things are on this map. This, this is called, these are called signs or signology. The science that, um, that provides the framework for thinking about the signs is semiotics. So you have a group of symbols and signs in a map, and the way that we interpret this is called semiotics. So we have the signed vehicle, so the, the symbol, maybe a dot on a map, which means a city, or a blue line on a map, which means a river. This is the sign vehicle. The interpretant, the person who interprets, and the referent. And I have a nice little picture here. So here's the interpretant. Yeah. Here's the sign vehicle on the map. And this is what we're looking at. So uh, the upper portion of the diagram is the sign vehicle. It carries the meaning. If, if this were on a map, I think all of us would understand that this is a, a fir tree or a, like a Christmas tree. But what if you never have seen, if you grew your entire life up in a desert and you saw this on a piece of paper, you have no idea, you have no reference to it. That's why this symbol is so important for the interpretant, the person looking at the map, uh, for us here. We've seen a fir tree before. We know what they look like. We understand that this symbol refers to this object. The problem is, of course, what if you don't know? What if we have a, a symbol saying elm tree or maple tree, and you have no idea what an elm tree or a maple tree is? These are the challenges that, uh, that we have to face when I'm making our maps. The last slide, uh, I sh uh, you probably all can read some of these words. This is a map done in French. Um, and as you see, you may not understand all the words in the map, but there are certain things that you still understand. You can still interpret this map pretty well, even not understanding what the map is about. So you understand, for example, that, that these black dots, some of them are small, and some of them are big, and there's numbers in them. So a small dot means a small amount. A big dot means a big amount. Uh, we realize that these orange areas, these must be the locations where these black dots are referring to. So here we have in Brazil a large, uh, a large orange area, a large orange polygon with a big black, black dot. So we can interpret this that Brazil must have a lot of whatever this map is showing. If we look here, now if you speak a little bit of French, you can um, interpret it. It says uh, billions of barrels uh, estimated uh, per region. Now, barrels, what kind of barrels? Look here, uh, it means locations per large zones of petroleum. Now that uh, uh, means we can interpret now, even though we don't know exactly how uh, this this uh, map I don't sp I speak French pretty well but uh, even if I didn't I could interpret this as these are the oil reserve areas estimated and the dot refers to how much is there 
So as you see, this is what maps are. They, uh, in this one, it, it communicates uh, data about uh, barrel reserve, uh, the uh, millions of billions of uh, barrels of oil reserves. Uh, but for you, we'll be applying this to your project. That concludes the presentation part. Um, are there any questions for the viewers uh, in cyberspace or in the room next next to me <laughs> about uh, the course or about what we discussed? Uh, the software is on the Blackboard site. Thank you, Simona. Ah, <laughs> the but it's on the Blackboard site, I believe, under Documents. So you'll see um, uh, the the presentations for one, two, three, uh, and then the third one is a word a word uh, self guided practical, and then the fourth on the list, I believe, on the top of my head, is the software itself. So you can just download it and install it. Uh, any should work on any platform. Uh, Macintosh, uh, Macintosh, uh, Microsoft. Um, yes, yay. <laughs> yes, there is a guide. That is the self-guided tour. So the self-guided tour says, um, go to Blackboard and download it. Uh, unzip it. Uh, click on this. Uh, now do this. Now do that. It's a so it'll take you a while to do it. Take, it I estimate an hour and a half to do the uh, tour. And then that's why it's over two days. So it take, should take you an hour and a half to do the self-guided tour. Uh, and uh, then the next day you have an hour and a half to do the homework. And the first question of the homework is, what did you, how, what did you do in the self-guided uh, tour? So don't skip the self-guided tour. All right, so if there aren't any questions, uh, we still have time. Uh, we have until 10.20. I'll let you uh, go to the Blackboard site and uh, where you, you will see the assignment. Um, and the assignment, you can fin fill in the assignment using just this presentation. I, uh, the first, there are, the assignment is divided into two parts what I call warm-up questions, which come directly from this presentation. And then I have what's called synthesis questions, where you have to do a little bit of work uh, on, you know, of thinking, synthesizing what you just learned. And that's normally, uh, I believe, I ask you to find a map online and uh, tell me what you see based on the theories I just uh, showed you now. If there are any questions, I will be here Obviously, tomorrow in class, we'll start off with questions about the assignments, if there are any questions. I'm going to stop for the YouTubers online. I'm going to stop the video, and I will see you tomorrow.